Hi, everyone. I hope you had a great uh, New Year's and you didn't get too drunk and aren't hungover. But I wanted to discuss a couple of things. Specifically, I want to address a YouTube guy who goes by the name of Tranquility Base. Um, he recently appeared on one of Candy's live Zooms and was talking with Trusted Living, Big Rob, and Street. And then eventually I came back on that show uh, near the last three hours to, to talk to him too. Well, I since went over that uh, video and listened really closely and pretty much figured out what that guy is talking about. And I have, I have a couple of comments about it. But before I do that, I just want to uh, say to Ben, uh, if it's a legitimate treasure hunt, meaning that you're going to show proof that you actually secured $1 million worth of gold and you're guaranteeing that it exists. You know, in other words, it's in an escrow account or something similar to that so that people don't uh, know that they're, you know, not chasing uh, something that, that they're never going to get. Um, but if, if that's true, then I wish you luck. I wanted to point out one thing I'm kind of confused about, though, Ben. I, now, I'm not on Discord, but my understanding is that you said that you offered the LLC $50,000 before the auction, but only if you can examine the jar, and they refused it. So you, in, you said that you were not going to bid on it during the auction because of that reason. They turned down 50000 So then apparently, and like I said, this is hearsay because I'm not on Discord, Somebody shows up and claims that they're the uh, owner of the jar. They bought the jar. So now you're saying you're the owner of the jar. So why would you make a fake account on your own Discord claiming that you bought the jar and then communicate back with yourself? Like, I don't understand the point of that. Um, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, wouldn't you just come out and say, yeah, I ended up buying it and make everything legit? You know, like, why start something out controversial? Um, I, I, I don't get that. Like, so maybe I'm missing something, but like I said, my understanding is some, some uh, producer or something like that bought it. Uh, and now I'm hearing on your video that uh, people are saying that you bought it. And I'm, I'm just confused about that, you know, because I've heard comments that that person said, you're going to have to wait a year to find out what's in it. So what I want to point out is right here on uh, thrill of the chase. Page 139. And Ben, I hope you really, it's not true that you bought it because if you did, I think you got ripped off. Um, even like Mike Calazar said, that jar isn't worth probably not even 20 grand. Um, right on the thrill of the chase, page 139, the answer with the millennium. Horace Friend says, the same autobiography that is in the treasure chest is also in the jars. So right there, he's telling you that there's nothing unique about the one that's in the treasure chest. Um, also, Forrest Fan commented that most people will find it boring because it was just to give the finders of either the jars or the, the chest an idea of who hit it. Um, he said he removed all the personal information regarding a special spot. So, like, that pretty much devalues the whole thing, considering it's not unique that there's 13 jars or whatever out there to have the same exact text in it. You know, I thought that you were a pretty smart guy. I'm kind of hoping that you didn't buy it. And this treasure hunt that you're doing is, is, is related to something else, because I think that's weird by the jar. But anyway, um, if it, like I said, if, if everything's above the board and you didn't buy the jar and all of that stuff and there's nothing to be suspicious about, if everything is all true, you know, good luck in, in your treasure hunt, you know, sincerely. Uh, so let me get back on to now the tranquility base. Like I said, on OTAC's channel, there's a video called E Before... NYE Forest Fen Talk video. And if you go, it's about seven or eight hours long, but if you go to the last three hours, you'll see this guy named Tranquility Base goes into the Zoom and he starts telling everybody that he's going to uh, help, uh, help everyone out because apparently, I guess, nobody really knows anything. So I really listened. I was listening while it was going on. I was playing a game and I went back and I recently listened to it slower and I took notes of everything that he said. And there's a lot of weird issues that come up. So let's look at his solve here. Basically, where warm water salt is Laredo Chapel, which has the miraculous staircase in it. It's on East Almedia Street. That is right here. So I put a thumbtack down where the stuff is. The Laredo Chapel is right here and the staircase is inside this chapel. And like you see, it's on East Almedia Street, right? Here's the oldest church in the United States, the San Miguel Chapel, okay? And then here's the capital of Santa Fe. 
So this is basically where his warm water salt. And you can listen to the video. Essentially, he's saying that where warm water salt is, is related to how the staircase which con was constructed using uh, two steam baths uh, as he would curb the staircase because the staircase was built with um, pegs and there's no nails or anything. And there's also no steel support beam. Um, I did a little bit of research into that just recently because I was never concerned with New Mexico uh, other than very briefly years ago. And basically, it's not really that big of a mystery. Um, the reason for the double helix is kind of like a spring, right? It's a spring. That's what it's defined as a helix. I um, mean, I thought it was interesting because it relates to five springs. But anyhow, it's, it's, it also, a double helix is the symbol for DNA. And for his friend said he left his hair in there. So, so in other words, this guy was saying that that's where one water salt. And then he mentioned a movie out there called uh, The Staircase that has Barbara Hershey in there. And Barbara Hershey walked with a limp. So that's where he came up with halt. So, I'm just, I'm not going to debate any of his stuff because I mean, I, nobody really knows at this point, but I'm just trying to find out some answers to questions from him. Okay, so here's Laredo Chapel. There it is, right? So let's look at his sob. So he begins it there. Okay, that, and the wood, by the way, I want to point this out to Tranquil. Um, Street was right. They do know what type of wood it was made as. It was made out of this here, P Picea, Picea spruce. The, the only odd thing about that is that the closest wood of that species that you'll find is in northern Colorado and mostly in Wyoming and further north in the Rockies all the way up to Alaska because it's it's high elevation and, and it only really grows in that area. But remember, a long, long time ago, um, it was colder to the south. Right? So there is a chance that they could have found it somewhere, but they haven't found it in New Mexico. I understand that, but I don't really think it's a big mystery. They do know the type of wood. and. Based on the research that I've done, like I said briefly, um, every single it's it's not a miracle. Obviously, it's just I mean, they had a really good carpenter. Um, he can make the stairs stable where because a, a spring itself is stable. It's going to balance itself out. The only thing it was kind of odd because he built it without any railing, so everybody was afraid to walk up and down it. But there's really nothing odd about it. I mean, the carpenter shows up. The carpenter was probably from France, which is the same place that the carpenter that built the chapel itself came from. Two years earlier, that man finished um, the chapel, and then he died before he was able to finish the stairs to get up to the choir. So they got this other guy that built it, and they're claiming they can't find the wood, but that's nonsense. You would have got the wood, exactly like I said, it does exist relatively nearby. Now, they probably would have known that through the Spanish that were there in the 1600s stuff, which is the same thing that Street and Candy and them are always talking about. So I don't really think that, that that's a big mystery, but we'll go with it. Okay, well, I'm just going to, like I said, not really try to go over every one of his clues, but that's where it is, okay? And then he said the Canyon Down, of course, is Canyon Road, okay? So my first question is, Canyon Road begins right here. So here's the chapel. He made a comment that all the clues are contiguous, meaning that as soon as you leave um, one clue, and go to the next. But this is not contiguous. Canyon Road is not contiguous with the Laredo Chapel, which is on Alameda Street. Now, granted, you could take Alameda Street all the way down, and it eventually turns into Canyon Road. Maybe that's what you were, you were talking about. I don't know. The way you described it, you went down Canyon Road. That's not contiguous. Okay. So, I, I mean, my question for you for that is, how did you end up there? But again, I'm just going to go with what you said. So they're on Canyon Road now. You're on Canyon Road. I, I, I can see that. Okay. Take it into Canyon Down. Okay. So our next place, uh, not far, but too far to walk. I agree with that too. Um, you have to drive. You can't walk. It's a pretty, pretty far distance. It's near. You're not driving that far, but it's, it's certainly too far to walk. Way the heck down here from up there. I, I would agree with that too. Now, your house of brown, you said, is a house where monks live across from the monastery by Crystal Ray Church. I'm assuming you mean that Crystal Ray Church is, is the monastery and there's a house nearby that is a mural of a monk with one hand low and one hand up. That's the upper hand. And that's where you turn off on the Upper Canyon Road. I never been here. Street has and other people have. But I did drop the, the car, this the little dude down here. 
just like you said. And I drove them from both places, from Canyon Road and also from the end of the road. And I drove them down here, and I looked on both sides. These are condos that 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 were um, rebuilt from a, an old school. It has nothing to do with monks. Um, this is a, um, a water park. Okay, this has no private dwellings on it. There's nothing over here at private dwellings, and all these are private dwellings. And when I went up this road, even though you don't tell me to, I went up there anyway to look around. All I see is the church. There are there are no murals. <clears throat> and I know you mentioned to make sure you look behind the bushes and all of that stuff. But if all the clues are contiguous, I should be able to stay in my car, come down Canyon Road, and I should be able to see this mural. In other words, it might be behind a bush, but it's got to be on the street. I don't need to get out of my car, park, and start walking on private property and looking in their backyard for a mural of a monk. You didn't say that. So how did you all of a sudden, where where did you decide to go on Upper Canyon Road? That's that's one of the other questions. How, how did you do that? Okay, so then the next line of the poem is from there. Now, there has to mean the home of Brown. So in other words, you just put in below the home of Brown. Then he says, from there, it is no place for the meek. How is a, a church no place for the meek? That's where the meek go. They go to a church. Are you interpret that? interpreting that some other way I don't, I don't understand again i agree with what you're saying that you would that that can be you know a signal to, to turn but i fail to see how that uh that is no place for the meek so could you uh fill us in with that at some point uh no paddle up your creek i agree with that you got the santa fe river comes down okay and there's a dry creek along up a granite road so no paddle up your creek i'll, I'll agree with that too okay so the home of Brown is the big thing here. I think that your home of Brown is weak, to be honest with you. Um, it, I don't think it has anything to do with monks, although obviously there's Catholic monks that are going to wear Brown. I don't see any indication of that. Now, now, the reason why I'm agreeing with you that it is possible is because just like my solve, I'll use a local map. So if I'm using an historical or a tour guide of uh, the city of Santa Fe, it probably describes the church. So I can see where you're getting it, but I don't see where there's a monk with an upper hand. I I, I don't know where you've seen that, right? All right? Let me look at the picture here. Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're talking about? That, that that he's got his hand up and then he's got a hand down holding some kind of a a vessel over here. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but that would be weird because these pictures that are here could disappear tomorrow. There's no Horace Friend doesn't have any control over them. To me, it would have to be something that you could physically see on the ground. So so anyway, you go up that, that dry creek bed. You're following Upper Canyon Road. Okay, now over here, I just know personally this is where there's reservoirs. Okay, so there's actually two reservoirs here. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. The Santa Fe River is an intermittent stream with two perennial reaches. Headwaters are the Santa Sangre de Cristo Mountains, and it ends at the Rio Grande. We know that. But there are two continuous reservoirs near the Santa Fe Canyon Preserve by the water treatment plant, which is what you're talking about. So I can see that these will be drawing nigh and stuff like that. I understand they're drawing water. I just got down with myself explaining how reservoirs, the, the town is drawing nigh. They get 40% of their water from these reservoirs that contain the runoff so that during the dry time they got water to supply to the town. So I understand that. Okay. Here's the water treatment plant that you're talking about. And right here, there's that sign you're talking about that has um it says water division on the top of the, the sign. This is Sangre de Cristo. And then it's got like an address. And then right below that it's got the two grist mill stones that each have a hole in it. So you're saying that will be your heavy loads or the two stones, and water high as this. Again, I agree with that. So I'm assuming, just like you said, if you continue up that road, there's nothing up here. So eventually, you're going to go up to the end of the road and reach a dead end, and you're going to be like, okay, where do I go from here? Now, you hinted at the fact that that's where Google Earth comes in, because when he says, look quickly down, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So there's something that you're you're looking for on the ground at that point. And then ultimately, what you're probably going to have to do is go around or maybe come in from above. 
up along this way. I, I, you know, I don't know. You didn't tell us that part of the solve, so I obviously can't talk about it. But um, that's pretty much it. Those are my questions for you. I, my questions, I got additional questions. Oh, and also the heavy loads of water high. Yeah, the grist millstone shaped like a yin yang symbol. And the yin yang symbol, it means like a duality. It means uh, two endings. Now, I want to make a comment about that because I use the double omegas in my SOP too. And when I was talking to Street and them, that's what made me realize that San Lazaro might have something to do with it because I'm interpreting the omegas wrong. It doesn't mean that you uh, necessarily go through the prone fights. It means that there's more than one treasure. Okay. So the treasure that Jack found, I agree wholeheartedly. Even if it's in, if it was in Yellowstone, it doesn't matter. That was the lure of the door prize. That's not, Jack didn't solve the poem. He didn't get the title. He didn't do anything. Okay. So the door prize was found. And I agree that Forrest Trent probably had things like that in place for when he was going to pass away or if something happened, like his family was being uh, harassed, he can end it. And that would legally remove any obligation because he, he, he said there was a chest out there and he said it was north of Santa Fe. Well, there was. And he said it was found. Well, it was. And it was just recently sold. So even if Forrest Fenn did, and I don't believe this is true, but even if he did come out with a video saying the clues, he's only giving you the information that you need in order to locate the door prize that was wherever it was, up in Wyoming, right? So that's irrelevant. Those, that information is not going to have anything to do with the real trove because everybody would agree, and I showed it in my last video. Matter of fact, I'll show right now again. So here we go again. This is that video that I recently made. Forrest Fenn's treasure hunt, TOTC, the big picture. This is near the end. Listen to what Forrest Fenn says. Now, clearly, he's not talking about a lure or a door prize. That's a joke. They're chasing something that, that they obtained with low-hanging fruit. All they did was go through the thrill of the chase and pick the name place and go there. Right. So they found that. Or, or more likely, I believe that Forrest Fenn had it moved. Okay, or somebody moved it to wherever it is, and he pre-planned this as his exit. Okay, so maybe he did record a video, but it's pre-planned as his exit. It's not the end of the chase. The end of the chase, you get a title, a title, and listen to what he's talking about here. Well, digging out there, I have five keys, and I come to this room where Pedro hid this treasure chest, and there's his wooden chest. It's full of ledgers. It's full of diaries. It has some trinkets in there, personal effects. And his, his diaries and his ledgers are going to tell me the names of the people who lived out there uh, in, 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 in 15, 60, 70, 80, 1600. How many sheep they had, how many goats, what was their relationship with the Spanish, with the Indians. And diaries of everyday life out there. We're going to rewrite the history of the Southwest. If we can find one of these wooden chest that has what I, what I know is in them, ledgers and, and uh, diaries and, and so forth. It's going to be wonderful when we do that. So there you go. Right there, Forrest Fenn is telling you that there's going to be something earth shattering that's going to change history. And, and obviously, for example, that's not going to happen in nine mile hole. He's clearly talking about <laughs> stuff that he researched. Now, you know him and his brother Skippy were working. They go down to Cozumel. They're doing all that research. And Preston's involved. Even Dow's involved or Creighton Fenn's involved. They find all of that. And then they trace it up to San Lazaro. Eventually, he buys San Lazaro. He excavates there over many years. And he finds one of the, the most holiest places there. And then he finds all these keys and all this information. And then he tracks it down to a treasure chest where he opens up and has a log. Now, that log is going to create information about the past. And I believe that's what he was after. That's why he was chasing, because the Spanish, when the, when the Indians came down and traded New Mexico, they took all that stuff north. That's how Forrest Fenn found, we're talking about the, the suit of Spanish armor, horse armor that they found up near Matizzi. Okay. So he's working with George Friesen, who did work in the Bighorns and, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, George Friesen. Um, that um, J. Ellis Ransom, um, Ken Tankersley, all of those people. So in other words, Forrest Fenn traced him from Siberia, which will be DNA again, 
In the 1500s, they came down along the coast. They went down to the Yucatan Peninsula, and then the Spanish came, beat the crap out of them after a couple of attacks, and then they forced them to retreat up to, up to San Lazaro. I believe Forrest Trump proved that. So I believe he found something in San Lazaro that sent him farther north. That's just my opinion. And, um, but that's what he's hinting at here. He's not talking about a, you know, a lousy old million, million dollar treasure chest. He's talking about something far, far bigger. Not the lure, not the uh, door prizes, I call it. So, so the other question I have, Blaze, uh, you didn't say it, but by the time you get to the line, this is if you found, if you've been wise and found the Blaze, you should already know what the Blaze is. So, how come when you were describing the, the clues above, you completely glossed over the blaze, okay? Also, in your solve, wh what is it? Now, he says, begin it. What is it? And please don't just say something silly like the, the chase. That, that's not what it is. Stanza, stanza one clearly has a meaning behind it or wouldn't be there. The same thing, I mean, there's 166 words. There's six stanzas, and they all have meaning, all right? Not just stanzas two, three, and four, and you're done. Um, there's three more stanzas there. So I'm curious, what does it mean to you? And um, also, if he was using a private house that monks live in, what if they moved after the chest was hidden? How does Forrest Fenn have any control over a house? Okay, and, and again, I can't find that mural anywhere. And um, now, granted, the Google Earth image, I believe, is from 2014. If it was made in 2014 and the chest was, the chase started in 2010, I should be able to see it. You, you can't tell me that I'm about to get out of my car and go and visit private residences in order to see, a, 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 you know, the mural. I should be able to see it visibly. Um, so I'm just asking you where that is. I'm not trying to be argumentative. I went through this. Um, and then again, how specifically did you get from where one water salt to Canyon Road? Because Canyon Road begins, up, well, you have to go one block, hang a right, and then make the first left. That's Canyon Road. So where does the poem tell you to do that? So that takes care of that. Uh, and yes, Santa Fe does mean holy faith. Again, I'm not debating it. Uh, your sob makes point. Makes sense up until the point where you get up at the at the water plant. Um, I, I don't see how I don't I don't agree with your Homer Brown, is basically what I'm saying. Well, there's a lot I don't agree with, but the Homer Brown um is the one that I'm having a problem with. So yeah, I got here some notes. Yeah, the stair I mean, I agree with all of this. The staircase. This is a double helix, okay, which is similar to a corkscrew or a spring. It's got 33 steps. He first wears jeans. He talks about jeans, which means DNA, and DNA is formed with a double helix. He left his hair in there. That's DNA, double helix. So I, I agree with that totally. But here's where the Frenchman comes in. The historian Mary Cook suggested it was this guy here that um, that built the staircase because the guy who built the church was also from France. Now, think about that for a moment. What, what country does France border? It borders Spain. So if the Spanish came here to beat the crap out of the Mayans, don't you think the Spanish would have bought some of their technology here? So, yeah, Jesus was 33 years old when he died. I don't think that matters. It, uh, but then there's, if you want to go down rabbit holes, um, it's also meaning, it said it's also meaning, well, the note that the Freemasons who are thought to be descendants of the Knight Templars, the Templars always use the number 33 in their work. And that could be why there's 33 stairs. Because maybe they knew something about uh, physics or you know something about the stairs. But, but when you watch a lot of those videos out there, it's funny because they make false claims and say, we don't know what wood type it is. We do know what wood type it is. We know how he bent it. We also know there's a similar staircase in France that's older. Um, and we do know just scientifically, it's been proven that it would be stable enough without the center pole. And it certainly didn't need nails. I mean, come on. They were constructing items out of wood and brick um, way before they even had metal over them, right? So now if you combine the knowledge that the Spanish have with the knowledge that the Mayans have, that might be what Forrest Fenn discovered. So uh, Barbara Hersey walking in with a lamp eye of our bed. And the other thing, Eric Sloan on reverence for wood book. Um, I agree with, with that, too, because he mentions Eric, Stone, Eric Sloan, although I do not believe you need to read any books. That's outside the thrill of the chase. However, and I do agree with you that B in Brown um, could be 
due to the fact that we're talking about reverence, because the name reverence for wood, whenever you revere something, it's very important. So it's all, it can also be a group of people, like monks, for example, a group of monks. You can associate that with a group of people. You can also associate it with the, actually, all the Indians. They're not redskins, they're brown skins to figure out where they came from, right? And the Spanish can be brown skins, so on. So, yeah, I can see that would be why B is capital. It certainly isn't referring to a Mr. Brown that, or Brown Trout. That, that's for sure. Um, unless you're doing like the low hanging solve that goes to a place like Yellowstone, then yeah, I mean, that's what a, uh, an amateur might, might agree with. But, but I would, I would gather to say that more than 50% of the people do not agree that it was, you know, at, at nine mile hole, um, in the chase. I can't, I don't have an exact figure of that, but I just, most people know that it's too easy. All you got to do is crack open the thrill of the chase and then he names the place right there. That's not a subtle hint. Now, Forrest Wren, when he said that the, uh, a lot of the comments he made about north of Santa Fe, um, above, uh, above 5,000 feet, below 10,200, he is talking about the treasure chest, okay? He's not talking about the clues, and he's not talking about the title of the gold. Who said, where did he say that the title of the gold or the clues themselves are limited to north of Santa Fe? He didn't say that. Okay, and he didn't, he didn't limit it anywhere. So he probably put the door prize out there to make it slightly easier to find. But then the person who really finds the solution, like I said, my solution with the wheel, right? Think about it. If you went down in the 1500s down to Yucatan Peninsula, okay, you had the technology of the same people that built the wheel. Forrest Fenn is working backwards through history, and he ends up in the Bighorn Mountains with uh, Ken Tankersley and George Friesen, and then he's on Cody Road with the mummy and all that, and he's in Matizzi with the Spanish horse armor. He was clearly tracing history back to its origins, and that's what ar archaeologists do. That's where they're most likely to find discoveries. So the further north you go, the older the discovery you're going to make. So how do you know that what he didn't find at San Lazaro was earth-shattering and indicated something in the north. You don't know that. But we can, we can tell you one thing for sure. He, he isn't talking about trout fishing. He's, he said it right there in this video. Something really big. And the other thing, um, I just want to make like a, a comment to kind of tease uh, Tranquility Base. As soon as he mentioned the belt buckle and the greenstone belt, I knew exactly what he was talking about. <clears throat> and, and an example of that is what's called the Abitibi greenstone belt. That is the largest gold depository that we found anywhere in North America, the Abitibi, and it's up in Canada. And, and the only reason why I mention that is for the last two and a half years, I was helping um, a partner of mine do some geological research using ArcGIS, um, QGIS, to look for uh, the ground to track fault lines and, and anticlines and synclines, faults, folds, um, you know, to try to track what happened because the people believe that like a hundred million years ago or 200 million years ago, the Abitibi broke, broke in pieces and it actually spun 180 degrees and down near South Pass is where it currently sits. And they believe there's a hundred million ounces of gold sitting at South Pass again. And we, we didn't have the technology back during the gold rush to find stuff like that. Well, they did. And we're all about, so I mean, I really, as soon as he said that, I knew exactly what he was talking about, you know. And that is also why Forrest Fenn said that Google Earth can't help you with the last clue because it can't go down far enough. And that's also why Tranquility Base was saying, think about this. What if the treasure is physically in, in the Rocky Mountains? He's hinting at something geographical. Now, if you go back and look at my other video, if you go back and look at this video here, Meaning of the Thrill of the Chase, I discuss everything that I'm telling you about right now. I show you how the mountains were formed and stuff like that, and how over time uh, the, the people came over to the United States. But if you look at this picture right here, okay, this is the Bighorn Uplift, okay? What's special about this is this red area is 2 billion years older than what's down in the basin. The entire southern Rockies from the Bighorn Mountains all the way down to New Mexico, and including Wheeler's Peak and all of that stuff, the, the, the rocks at the top, the area at the top where he's talking about all the ground, 
is actually far older than the stuff that's sitting in the basin. That is completely different structure geologically than it is in the northern Rockies, which would contain everything from, let's say, the Wind River and north, including Yellowstone, and then all the way up through Montana to Alaska. That is not the same structure as this. That's what we're talking about. See this green and this yellow down here? You can see on this chart, that's, that's newer ground. And as you're walking up the mountain, you're essentially going back in time. Okay, so when you're up on the top of the mountain, okay, what's physically in there? You know, did Forrest Friend track a fault? I'm just going to say stuff like that. Did he, did he find something? Because remember, the Spanish were there looking for gold. Okay, so how, maybe Forrest Friend found something there. So if you continue up into the mountains out of Santa Fe, now, trust me, I still believe the Bighorn, but I could see a connection to San Lazaro. But I believe we'd be sending it to the mountains in Santa Fe, okay, northeast of Santa Fe. He's doing it exactly for this reason. So I wanted to tease you, uh, Tranquility, because you got to be careful what you say or who you say is around, because I've been, do been doing this kind of research for a couple of years. I'm certainly no expert in it, but, but what if Forrest Fan discovered the same thing in New Mexico? I think that's what you were hitting at. When you said that once you go past the power plant, you're going to put the mountains, but you're not going to know where to go. That's because in order to do that, you're not using the right map at that point. I'm just going to say that. Um, that's what I believe. So I don't believe anything was like in Santa Fe City itself. Like I believe that there's something that Forrest Fenn discovered that's going to bring you something that's going to be earth shattering. Now, it could just be the documents themselves and everything that he found. Maybe you found something, like I said, that that uncovered the past. He's, he says it right there. It's going to change history. And that would explain why the FBI is after him. I don't. I mean, I think that if he put something, let's say, in Yellowstone, obviously it's illegal. Obviously he's going to get fined and it should be public record and blah, blah, blah. But that's not really their concern. They don't give a crap about that. They want to know what the big discovery is at San Lazaro. We think about the street gates to get in there. It's fenced in. It's got armed guards and it's got live video surveillance. Why are they protecting that place so often? Why does Forrest Frank keep talking about it? You know, why did he buy it like a couple of years after Skippy died? Why? What did he find out? What did him and Skippy discover? See, that's the kind of stuff that Street and Candy and them are talking about. And this is what I find interesting. And interesting enough, this, the same area that Trusted uh, Living is looking in has this same geological structure. The, 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 the areas on the top are far older than the stuff that's down in the valley, you know, down by Denver and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I believe there's way, way, something way bigger. So what else do I have here? Um, oh, uh, I already mentioned this, ArcGIS. Like I said, it's geological, um, spatial uh, analysis, uh, you know, including... Things like anticlines, synclines, dips, folds, faults, et cetera, which is how you try to track the land and the land movement, which is how you locate things like this uh, this here. But did Forrest Fenn take it that deep? I don't know. But one thing I want to mention about Rocket Man, Rocket Man is exactly what you said. It's, it's it, Elton John, a reference to Rocket Man, okay? But the reference, if you read the thrill of the chase, is actually to Apollo 8 and Apollo 13 because he describes what Commander Lovell did. The man, Lovell was the man who covered the earth with his thumb and covered up billions of people, okay? And then when, when he was commanding Apollo 13, that was supposed to be the first one to land on the moon. But they went to the dark side of the moon and the system and the oxygen failed. failed. They caught on fire, so they couldn't land. They had to turn around and come back to earth. So why do you think Forrest Fenn is talking about his blinking oxygen light above 50,000 feet, okay? To make sure that he could still breathe and his blood wouldn't boil. That's exactly what would happen. So Pennsylvania could have just simply been a reference to Tom Hanks who played the Apollo 13 movie. And this matches, like I said, Forrest Fenn's fun comment and everything. Um, but I don't believe Forrest Fenn required you to watch any movies. So I kind of agree with the guys on that. I don't think that Forrest Fenn would say, oh, yeah, you got to go watch The Staircase. Um, so, so like I said, I don't really agree with your sob. But I'm just trying to give you the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, more warm water salt is at that church. Let's, let's agree with that. But I don't understand your home of Brown. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems like you're jumping from place to place and you're making a lot of assumptions. I don't see how everything is contiguous. If you go and watch my sob 
if I'm right or wrong, it doesn't matter. But I meticulously go through every single step to, to try to prove my point. Um, you haven't done that to prove your point up to heavy loads and water high. I want to see exact, exact steps, how you see these things. Where is that mural? Where did you see that? Where does he tell you to go refer to a movie, um, The Staircase? Um, can you show me local um, history that I can find boots on the ground that would explain everything that you described, but in a way that it would line up with the poem, all right? We know Forrest Fenn wasn't religious, so I don't think Forrest Fenn looks at that as a miracle because he's kind of a science-based guy, too, and he's spiritual, yes, but he knows how that, how that stuff was built. That wasn't a miracle. There's nothing miraculous about it. There's answers as to every single question on there, including the absence of nails. There's nothing in, ingenious about it. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the story about the man coming up uh, on his donkey and all that, he did it without paying for anything, and he disappeared. That's folklore. That's like reading the Bible. I mean, you know, it's the same type of a thing. That's not, that's not really proof. And I, I don't think Forrest Fenn would hinge it on that. But what he would hinge things on is something that he found in San Lazaro. That even if the treasure chest was up north, like let's say at the Bighorns, that that's only the lure to door prize. So it doesn't matter. These guys are pointing out that the double omegas just mean that there's two chests. So the first omega is gone. Jack found it, right? But that's not the real one. That's not the big one. That's not the trove that we're seeking. Uh, we don't. Jack doesn't have a title. Jack doesn't even have a solution. Um, so that's over. But there's a bigger piece to all of this, the people that still have, uh, you know, the knowledge and have solved the poem. So now I can understand why tranquility might want to be secretive for that reason, just like I'm secretive, because I know a lot more than what I'm telling you. I'm never going to tell you. Um, and the same thing with Street, he knows more, and Candy knows more, and Rob knows more, Trusted knows more. We're not going to tell you everything either. But if you're going to come out and explain, the first couple of clues, at least play and explain them in a cohesive manner. I don't believe that you've done that. And again, don't take this the wrong way. But once you put that, put something out there, be prepared to be criticized. But I do respect you for putting it out there. You did far more than, than other people do because a lot of people would just come in and say, oh, you're wrong. You're an idiot. Um, you didn't do that. You tried to explain your point. And, and I applaud that. Not only did you try to do it, but you spent over three hours doing it, right? I think that was pretty cool. But it would be nice to see you come back. Now, I don't, on my channel, I don't do Zooms, and I think that this is more appropriate for Zoom. So if you did a Zoom with Street or Candy or something again, that would be really cool because I'm interested to see if you answer any of the questions that I brought up here or you're willing to go through more detail, at least through your, your home of Brown. That's the one that I'm really not getting. I, I can't. I can't see how that works without having to do major research um, above and beyond. You know. So anyway, I hope you do that, and I hope everybody has a great week. I don't want to drag this video out any longer than it needs to be, but I, I did enjoy uh, watching that and, and being able to listen in close to what that guy was saying because indirectly he doesn't realize this, but he helped me out with my song uh, because I see, I believe, and I made this comment in the video, um, I believe I see why he got stuck. And the problem, the reason why he got stuck is not because of what he thinks. He made the wrong turn. Let's just put it that way. But he would have found out that it leads him somewhere entirely different. It's not in Santa Fe. It's not in Santa Fe at all. Like you said, it's Northeast, but it's not where you think it is. Uh, and I'm not going to explain that to you, just like you're not going to explain to us where your final spot is. I get it. So anyway, I hope to uh, look forward to uh, you coming out and explaining more to us. And again, um, it, and also I want to make one final just parting comment. I, I like what Candy did with the uh, giving that away uh, to Galaxy and doing the trivia. That was fun. There was no arguments. That's the kind of stuff I believe we can do at a Temple Texas party. So uh, kudos to you for doing that, Candy. And galaxy that was that was really cool that you're giving it to rob um so i think that that was that was a great um new year's eve to say the least and and i think it's an example of what we could do if people stop 
arguing and try to focus on that. And yeah, Bill, I mean you. Uh, you know, like I said, your solve also falls within, within this stuff too. But why don't you be a, like I'm admitting my solve could be wrong. As much as I stick to it and I do it on my channel, I could be wrong. So you got to be open to criticism, Bill, without without calling everybody ignorant. If they do like this guy did and they actually explain you through and walk you through and provide proof, that's not trolling you and that's not bigoted. The guy's trying to help you just like we are. And it's wrong to come out and accuse people of doing that. If it's somebody in your chat room doing it and they're just being a dick, yeah. Anyway, hope everybody has a great week and a great New Year. Peace.